to have the greatest impact. All right, so we are able to live stream to YouTube this morning. So we're just getting that set up as well. And thank you so much for being here. I hope you're having a great start to your week. And let's see if we've got the connection here. Have the greatest impact. All right, there we go. All right. I love it when things work. Okay. Just about to get started. Okay. Thank you so much for being part of our genius community. I really appreciate it. And like I said, we're going to just do a little brief slideshow, but then um, I do want to go right into a case. So if um, even if you've received frequencies before, if you want me to talk about your case, work on your case, um, do volunteer. So we want to get into some just talking about case strategies. Otherwise, I'm just gonna have to put up an example of a case. So like, it'd be good for somebody to volunteer. So warm welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining today. And let's just see who we've got here joining us. All right. So I think Joyce was going to join us, but it looks like maybe she's not going to join us. She was going to tell us about, share a story about a case. If she jumps back in, I'll sort of check in and we'll have her share her story. Is there anybody else who has had any type of a success in a case that they would like to share with us? Then go ahead and let us know. All right. So um, once again, if anybody would like to volunteer today to have a session, we are going to go through how to solve a session, some strategies for doing that. And I want to show off, sort of showcase the top 50, the lower 50, the entangled insights, progressive insights. So let's see if we have a volunteer. Okay, so Jennifer, sure. Okay, Callie, I need your date of birth. So Callie, you're our volunteer. Put your name, I forgot to record this. All right, so Callie, you put your date of birth into the chat. Jennifer, let's hear from you how you're doing. Fantastic, okay. So Jennifer, we're gonna go to you and let's see if we can find you here. Fantastic, all right. And then Cal, you'll come up in a moment and we'll have you join as well. And so we're talking about different successes and strategies, kind of getting to the gems, you know, that's what people really want. They want some aha moments. And if you bring a new awareness to them, you've done an incredible service for them. So Jennifer, how are you? Let's see if we um, need to un unmute you there, there. I did it. I unmuted myself. Can you hear me? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, tell us a little bit about the last person that you scanned. Uh, so this was my first time scanning on a Zoom. So I still have questions because I could only see her. I couldn't see me. I couldn't uh, share my um, genius. I mean, it just wouldn't pop up anyways. Um, so I'm still learning, but okay. So I got my client and I just scanned her the, the easy way. I just picked up my iPad this way, like you do, you know, and had her do her voice. And then I took her picture and then I ran some frequencies. And so when I was putting them in the entangled insights, you know, uh, you know how it shuffles it, the top one that came up of course was rock rose. And you always say if the top um, Bach flower comes up or any item that's the top, let's talk about it because it came up. So I talked to her about it and I read from my Bach book. I got out just like you do. I'm a, you're a good teacher. Anyway, so. Um, and, but you're an uh, expert. You're, sorry, really, sorry. you're really quite proficient in, in Bach energies, right? Yes, yes. I've studied them for the last four years. I'm a pretty much Bach practitioner. So I've got all of the little vials in my case. I talked to, you know, it I must be fun for together. you in, in some ways, because you probably instantly start to recognize how matching how much that is matching the case. Oh, that and myself too. You know, I can start getting impatient and I go grab my bottle of the impatience and do a couple drops. You know? That's so funny. Yeah. So I just reading Rock Rose, I said to my client, I says, OK, so Rock Rose is for terror. 
I said, it's like um, when you're under an acute threat, such as a natural disaster or a uh, sudden illness or a car accident, you know, or a mugging. And she put her head down and I said, what is it? And she said um, her granddaughter um, died of a drowning last oh summer. My God. And then oh she said, God. and we recently just had to put our lab down. And I'm like, wow, you've got two things happening besides taking like Star of Bethlehem, because that's another good one. That's I right. said, let's send the frequencies to you right away. And I'm just, I just have to say on how accurate the genius is and, and then pick that up because she must be still holding on to that terror or have, hasn't let it come up yet. You know how we push things down? Yep. We can, we do that too. So I, I talked to her about it. I go, we need to, you know, this should help, you know, if there's other things that you can do, I said, walk, exercise, move, you know, yada, yada, you know, all that. So anyways, I just wanted to let everybody else know how accurate the genius can be if you allow it, you know, just by looking at it with well, your energy, really their starting energy, to, starting to make those connections. And like you said, having the confidence, you as the practitioner have to work to really connect that remedy, you know, to the case, you know, and, and, and sometimes you can just say, or recognize the importance, like, yes, that top remedy, let's bring it out to the person, read the meaning. And then in hearing them, you start to make the connection and then they start to recognize it too. And even as they're making the connection there, you know, she's letting a lot of the grief, you know, out, she's getting to emote it and resolve it, even just in your sort of your recognition, your observation that this is going on for her. Yeah, she was surprised. She's like, how did you know? I go, I, I didn't. It's it's the frequencies. It's what, you know, what it's all about. And then I think you can kind of turn a brand new client around going, wow, it is correct. It knew, you know, That's right. That's right. Yeah. It's tremendous. And then they have a lovely, um, you know, a rapport with you and also a trust. And so the more that they trust, the more they're participating and then the more that they're ultimately getting benefit from it. So it's really, really cool. Yeah, that's all you can hope for. I mean, we we put one wall down, right? You know, that's all we can do. And we can just be there and just send the energy back to them. But yeah, it's great. So thank Fantastic. you for letting me share. Oh, Jennifer, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for being part of our community. I really appreciate it. All right, that's great. Fantastic. Anybody else have a case that they want to share about or something they want to let us know about? And we'll continue to ask um, for participation. If you're a practitioner and you want a little spotlight um, during our weekly training, um, just not ongoing, but a one-time spotlight, then we'd love to feature you. We were trying to do that last year a little bit and just didn't sort of get a flow with it. But if you're someone who's starting your practice, you'd like to talk a little bit about it let people know about it, then we would love to feature you. So get in touch with me at ariel at geniusbiofeedback.com. So on Tuesdays, now this Tuesday, we don't have class or practitioner hour, but on Tuesdays, you can join us. And it's been really fun so far. We did our first session last Tuesday. We worked with two clients and we're going to continue. Now, some of you have sent me your application. And I apologize. I was actually uh, just sick for part of last week, so I'm just a little bit delayed in scheduling when you're going to spend time with us, and I will be back with you very, very soon. So if you've sent me an application, please know I will be back in touch with you to get that scheduled. So on Tuesdays, the reason I'm doing this is I want to share with people how I'm working on cases and give you all the information, um, a, a, a template for working with your cases that combines not just the genius, but food as medicine, affirmation, so the focus on thoughts, and also praying for the clients. The clients that we're working on, I am praying for them. And that is something that has been actually studied to be very powerful that as a practitioner, you can pray for your clients. You can take a small amount of time, it only takes a, a few moments during your day to just send out a prayer to them and it's quite powerful and to see if it makes a difference this combination of actions makes a difference in the outcomes that you're having 
So it's a unique opportunity. It's totally free. And so if you're a practitioner and you want to know more about how I am approaching my practice and utilize it in your own practice, then you can join this. Now to sign up for it, you just simply go to geniusbiofeedback.com and then just go right to our events page. Let's see if we can bring that up here in a moment. And then we'll be working with our client. We'll be talking about our topic of the day here. So thank you so much again for being part of our session today. Let's see if we can go to our website here, geniusbiofeedback.com. We recently um, got some new reviews and we really thank you people that review. If you want to write a review, then just go to Genius Biofeedback, click on the reviews and write a review. And we actually offer you um, a cool free library for writing a review. You can just contact us and say, hey, I, um, I published a review or I wrote a review. I'd like my free library. And we have a, a, a special library that we send to you to thank you. So thanks everybody for doing that. And also we have our um, learn menu and on the learn menu, we have our blog. So for today, we have some strategies for success and we have some of our basic processes that you can see here and you can download that. You can also see um, basic process number four on its own, which I call nourishing and energizing. So you can download that sort of a process of how to do that. Okay, and um, just a, a little document about understanding how genius sessions work. And you could send this to a client, you could put this on your own, um, you know, with your own logo or letterhead, just sort of says some information about genius sessions in general. I thought that could be helpful. And the functional zones, a lot of people ask about the functional zones, so I just wanted to include some information today about the functional zones in case you haven't found that in your mastery guide. So that's um, information for today. We also have our events page. So right here we have our events page and we do have some special libraries on sale for Valentine's Day. We're going to be posting that a little bit later on this morning and we'll be following up with an email. So, uh, so sorry, it shouldn't read for tomorrow. We do not have class tomorrow. We'll just move this over here, but we do have it starting on the 20th. So if you're a practitioner or you want to be practitioner, or you just want to come and observe, join us for practitioner hour on Tuesdays. The next practitioner hour is February 20th. Okay. So we are working on an email to share this for people who signed up and want to see the recording. Um, we do have a recording for people who signed up to be part of our practitioner program, and we will be emailing that out. Wendy, thank you so much for asking. Can any one of us come and observe this, any of the sessions? Yes, you can. And I think, um, I thought the application, I'm going to have to find where we posted the application. We're going to need a page just for the practitioner hour, so I will work on that. Just contact me if you're interested in being a volunteer. Um, Callie, you're going to be a volunteer for today, but if people want to be a volunteer for practitioner hour, just contact me by email and we'll get you the application. That's going to be just a lot easier. Okay, so then back to our lecture for a moment. And I'm just going to go ahead and do this. And then Callie, I'm going to bring you up here in just a moment. So you're going to see yourself as a, um, as a panelist and just hold on opening your microphone and camera just for a minute. Just so I can finish this, I just want to touch on our topic for today. And I kind of call it gems of understanding, which is I want to look today with you for sort of a, a gem of understanding. Um, so, all right. Fantastic. Great, great to have you, Callie. I'm just going to invite you on in just a second here. Um, so, yeah. I, when you find these what I want to look with you and you can also shout out some of the thoughts that you have in the chat we're going to bring up say the top 50 and the lower 50 and then given the client's description of what's going on with them and what they want to achieve can we find some interesting gems along the way so that's what I want you to constantly be thinking when you're doing a case, how does this relate to this? How does this piece that I discovered relate to this piece? 
and you will find some real aha moments, some amazing gems of understanding that person. And we're going to explore the top 50, the lower 50, entangled insights, look within a particular panel, look at progressive insights, and even comparing results across different panels. So this may seem obvious to some people, but I really want to just highlight it and talk about it, that this is the way that you can cultivate such an, a deep understanding of that person. They're coming to you asking for help. And you can just so many observations and things that you can pull together. And when you see the physical issue, you may also see a Bach flower essence that's kind of related to that physical issue. For example, um, oak is in a state of exhaustion. So being in a state of exhaustion, you may see all of these adrenal clues come up. And so then you can connect those. That's what I'm talking about. So let's find some gems of understanding today. To do that, we're going to bring on Callie. So Callie, I'm going to go ahead and start your camera there and your and unmute you. So, okay, Callie, thank you so much for joining us. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you. All right. Well, how is your genius practice going? I am. I'm working on uh, to have uh, working on myself so far to start out with, so that I could start. I come from experience. That's a good idea. And uh, I'm I'm noticing that when I do work on the, I notice when I check on my aura that it it does change. But sometimes, like there's a lot of, um, it seems like there's if there if it's not one area that is really clear then in the other it kind of like switches a little bit kind of um interesting uh to kind of go through and figure out well what's going to be the most important what can i get the most value out of to, um you know that would be optimize my my wellness and success in life excellent very cool well let's go ahead and um record your voice. So I'll go ahead and I'll start recording in three, two, one. I'm recording. A E I O U Kelly Lavina. My focus is on frequency of wellness, love, peace, joy, happiness, miracles, wealth, success, fun, peace of mind. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's absolutely great. Now, I'm still having an issue with my Mac and getting this photo correct. So I'm going to skip the photo for now, but the voice will be plenty. Now, let's talk about, is there, you already stated a great statement there. Is there anything that we should be focusing on or anything that would increase our understanding of what you're trying to uh, achieve, improve, or transform? Well, what I am trying to transform is 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 to have um better harmony with my physical senses my all of my senses uh being able to like i do have some uh cataract situation i started as an ulcer many years ago and so there seems to be and there's my hearing has um I'm working on now to try to harmonize that to restore again because I've been having over the years of where I live in my space is very environmentally not as um poor um what is it um ventilation is sometimes not as good um or the and I seem to be having trouble overcoming the sensitivities in my environment and that might be affecting my my ears and my my eyes but then there's a lot of stuff about being able to receive so that might be a big thing for me is my ability to transform being able to actually become self sufficient cuz which is what I really desire to do and be become more prosperous in my life and to be able to make a difference and have some breakthrough so the thing that's going on too is that I have um, a a um, something in my leg from doing a uh, from having had an accident years ago. Okay, where... Callie, Callie, I'm thank you. That this is a very yeah. good explanation and a very good primer for what we're looking for. And always when we're working with a client, it's really important to say, you know, what are the things we're sort of focusing on. 
for today. And you did definitely give me a good background and understanding. So um, we're focusing on hearing, we're focusing on getting clarity about moving forward. Those are some of the things that we're focusing on. Is that right? Yes. Excellent. Okay, fantastic. All right, well, I am going to let you sit back and enjoy and we'll check in with you in just a little bit. Does that sound okay? Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay, fantastic. All right. So hearing and just getting clarity on life. I think she also said some vision too, maybe some chemical sensitivities because of needing good ventilation in the place that she was working. And, you know, so those are some of the things that she's thinking about. But what I really want to do is sort of go back to some of the basics around, you know, what are we doing, you know, when we're sort of looking at these panels and how can we kind of get some gems of understanding? So when you're first looking at a case, you want to look at, we've explored um, the basic processes where we look at some basic things within the system overview. For example, if you've been watching for some time, you know that I typically look at today's stress and right off the bat, we can see that she's got sensitivities and that could be some type of sensitivity from maybe the being in a place with poor ventilation for some time. And then we see interesting heavy metal toxicity. Maybe that's something through occupational exposure as well. Acidity. Now we're not going to come to a grand conclusion about all of these because obviously we very hard in a short amount of time, but let's just, we sort of, I sort of rapidly go through them and I am thinking about them like acidity, hormonal virus, degeneration, inflammation, environmental, liver, infection, immune, nutritional. I also see a pattern of depletion. So it looks like we need to nourish, we need to build up the systems. So those would be things like maybe um, some ashwagandha or licorice or something to fortify the adrenal, some adaptogens, holy basil to kind of nourish the body. Then let's look at what things are in the top red. So there are fewer things in the top red that are in the lower blue. So we see that, that's why I'm saying that pattern of depletion. And as people move into more of depletion, um, they can actually get less red because red is your ability to fight things off. It's your ability to respond. It's your acute ability to uh, mount an immune response. And as that sort of gets eroded, right, as we're sort of like just exhausted, then that we can see less of the red and perhaps more of the blue. So sensitivities, pathogens, cardiovascular, brain, emotional. Okay, so cardiovascular, brain, emotional, pathogen, sensitivities. All right, so we take all of that in. Then, as you know, I sort of have these steps memorized, but I have a certain uh, panels that I go through every single time for consistency. And I encourage you to find your consistency. What is your skeleton for scanning, where you go through, through the same thing each time just to get an overview? So I want to look at body systems. What's interesting in body systems is I see circulatory, and I also saw cardiovascular in the last one. You know, the biggest challenge that we face today is keeping our cardiovascular system fit, right? Because so many things being at our screens and things like that encourage us to be more sedentary. And it's the colder part in the northern hemisphere. So we stay in more, but whatever we can do to keep up the circulation, to keep up the exercise, because it does condition our circulatory system, which is really important. Then we see the endocrine system. We also see, we saw hormones in today's stress. And then we go to organs. So that's interesting. Wow, look at those. So the lungs, so that's really a gem right there because the lungs are so low. And she said she was in a place with four, poor ventilation. Almost certainly that's an important um, piece in the case. And so you'd want to sort of take some notes and you may want to just stop here and just balance the lungs for a couple of minutes because it's so important. She did mention her eyes. And what's really funny is eyes and liver are deeply connected. We've got stomach, kidneys, brain. So we saw brain a couple of times, skin, and bladder. Oh, I could have just 
just grab the top. Okay, so there we go. So organs, and then we have glands. Now glands is kind of low. So there's some depletion there overall in glands. Let's do it this way this time. And there's that adrenal, thyroid, thymus, hypothalamus, thymus. Wow, we almost need a, a total sort of overall endocrine renewal. All right, so then we've got digestion, which was in red here. Mouth, stomach, large intestine, liver, small intestine. Wow, so there's a lot of liver stuff that comes up. And then we've got the enclo being in that enclosed place. So we could be affecting the liver with off-gassing. And we've also been affecting the lungs. So now we're starting to really, you know, cook here because we're starting to discover some important information. Now we always include our Bach flower essences in this run through, which is called basic process number one. So wild rose. Now wild rose, I think is about sort of resignation, you know, just like, I don't know what to do next. Sort of that feeling of, you know, um, being in that place of just, you know, not sure how to proceed. I'm maybe even sort of giving up a little bit. And, the, you know, they talk, they talk about it being resignation. And then Elm is overwhelmed by responsibility. So we'll relook at some of these in Progressive Insights. Now, to the topic of today. Now, we already were doing some of the topic of today by looking at those panels. Let's go to our general overview and let's look at things lined up from top to bottom. Now, I want to remove the library, but before I do, let's see. Um, wow, I'm, I guess I won't. I'll look at this before and with, with and without the libraries. So this is so interesting. It's like the belief that I'm a bad person. So that could be just be from childhood or something that, the, you know, that Callie went through at some point, or it could not apply at all. But isn't that interesting? You know, this um, scan of the top 50 and the lower 50 scans so many items, like thousands and thousands of items. So I always find it fascinating to look at the ones that are coming up here. So we've got lavender. So lavender is a very significant essential oil for Cali, very significant. Um, okay, and then, wow, so interesting. Sabadilla at um, 200C for itching and watery nasal discharge clear. So I wonder if you have any of that going on at all. Okay, flat sar sarcoids. I'm going to say it doesn't apply. Let's see, chromium. So chromium is coming up as a needed mineral. That's interesting. Let's see. I break through the stuck patterns and emerge victoriously immediately now in this moment. And it's related to an affirmation for anxiety um, and stress. So let's put that one up here because that's really significant. Transition energy. I'm open to the transition. All right, so that's fascinating, isn't it? I'm open to the transition. Change is always, uh, there's always fear with change because it's the unknown. 40, body voltage, high optimization. So the body voltage needs some adjustment. The electricity, the electrical flow. Vision improvement. So that's interesting that the frequency for that is coming up. Okay, Ignatia, a past grief. So that's something we kind of want to write down in our notes. Something about past grief. Is there past unresolved grief? And 10M is quite a high dose of that um, homeopathic. Ignatia is a homeopathic remedy, I should explain, for moving through grief. Okay, disbelief. I am completely protected and bathed in the light of divine protection and love. Now, not every single thing is showing 777. It's just that there's so many things being tested, and we could go down here and find things that are not 777. Let's look at the very low items here and take a look at what those are. So I think I have to go back here. GABA is too low. Okay, our mind can get very, very busy if our GABA is too low, almost like an attention issue, a very hard to concentrate or focus. So that's fascinating that it comes up. Collagen, I'm just going to skip some things if I don't think they're too relevant at the moment. 
Um, as I observe what is true, I experience lightness and laughter. Well, let's go back to thoracic nine. So this is thoracic nine. So if we go to thoracic nine in the desk reference success cards, let's see what it's connected to. So thoracic nine, and if anybody has any other ideas, things they wanna throw out, things they're observing, you certainly can put that into our chat. Okay, so thoracic nine is adrenal glands. So adrenal glands are stepping forward as being one of the really important issues here. So we've got adrenal health, we've got liver health, we've got lung health. So those are kind of stepping forward. It also has to do with allergies, which is something that we saw with the, Sabad with the Sabadilla 200C, which is a homeopathic remedy. Allergies, chronic fatigue, hypertension, feeling a victim to life or life circumstances is the emotional energy related to that. Brain optimization. It's interesting that um, bronchi anatomy comes up. That's fascinating. But specifically nerves, the nerves that are innervating the, the lungs. That's kind of interesting. All right, let's see if there's anything else. So right now I'm just going to go ahead and remove the custom libraries and take another look, looking at just the items in the system overview. Let's go ahead up to the top. So once again, lavender, wild rose, I think we included that and the emotion of feeling like you're suffering. Cervical seven, so we got cervical seven in addition to T9. So cervical seven is in the neck, it's the lowest vertebra in the neck, and it's related to the thyroid gland. We did see the thyroid gland come up. Upper respiratory infection, bursitis, feeling like you're helpless. So there's kind of a match there between the C7 emotion uh, connection and the T9 emotional connection. Since dander, an herb, cat's claw, frustration, let's see. Let's see what we've got here. An essential oil, birch, go through here, see if there's anything else. Gratitude, St. John's wort, oxytocin, dairy, throat chakra. I think I actually do find it more helpful with the libraries. I think there's more aha moments because you're going through more pieces of information. And so it's even more heightened about these little gems that you find at the top here that I think you wouldn't normally be able to find in a regular session. And so you're finding things that are at the very, very edges. They're the most important items to look at. And so this is really fun for finding those gems of connection, things they may have never thought of, or things that you might bring up and they might say, yes, that's a match, that really does make sense. Here's magnesium oxide. And sometimes I'm going through this sort of with my intuition or my understanding, and I'm putting things in here because I'm going to resort them in progressive insights. Hyperbolic hypoxia effects are released now. Wow hypoxia could that be that lungs not having the proper circulation all right releasing the need for extra protection okay i forgive all others um, let's see life changes this is an apex energetics remedy so there's that transitions piece again asclepius tuberosa that's for the lungs all right, now let's go to progressive insights and let's see out of these sort of gems, what are the ones that come to the very, very top? Elm, okay. Let's read Elm is, I believe, weighed down by responsibility and that comes out at the very, very top. Let's go ahead and let's look at Elm in the book floral acupuncture right one of my favorite books on the flower essences elm is the flower essence to use when you feel overwhelmed in your life such as when you're consumed with many projects going on at once your energy may spread out to the periphery of your field in an attempt to encompass so many details the scattering of your forces can result in the sensation of trying to keep your feet on the ground while being blown back and forth by the demands coming to you from all directions. 
Elm brings your energy out of your peripher out of peripheral awareness into your body. That's so important. So Elm really, just like you can imagine an Elm tree, really it helps you be grounded. And it's very difficult to make decisions and to make good decisions for what you need to do next for your health or any other part of your life when you're not grounded. So it really helps to bring you into present moment. Okay, so let's see. Okay, I have a metal pin or screws in my leg from having multiple fractures in 2016. All right, we're going to talk to her in, in a moment here. She also mentioned the cataracts. Okay, we'll talk about that as well. So we've got heavy metal toxicity, um, hornbeam. And so we we're just, just talking about hornbeam the other day. So hornbeam is when the weariness of lot for life just descends on you in the morning related to tiredness connected to your destiny. So, you know, when you're sort of contemplating all of these things, you just feel weary and worn out hornbeam. And so when you utilize the hornbeam, it refreshes your body, sparks new interest in your tasks and revivifies inspiration to find a connection to your true destiny. Well, that is amazing. All right, well, let's bring Callie back on and hear her perspective. What are your thoughts, Callie, as we've been going through this? It very much resonates. The, you know, the, the there is a lot of, um, activity going on and wanting to sort out you know what's going to be the best choice was you know i go try this or try that try to be multiple and different and and then i find that i'm <laughs> i'm getting a lot of um or i start to go on a path and then i find i need to be doing something else or that i'm doing a lot of clearing work doing a lot of block clearing of inner blocks uh clearing away and it could take up my day, you know, and so it's almost like I don't really have time for, for something enough to make it a happy end result because I'm having to go back to the main central core of releasing whatever blocks that are going on in my way. So I get overwhelmed. I think having the genius is really, really helpful. And you may want to just pick three affirmations every day just to keep your mind focused and not worry so much about the you know the mental thought of um, trying to resolve all the issues. Just get focused on three affirmations that come up for you in an area that you're interested in and just keep your mind really focused. So it, otherwise it can be really exhausting sort of to go back and forth and some of the, you know, to start, sort of resolve these issues. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Okay, cool. All right, I'm going to do a little bit more work on you. Do you have a quanta capsule? Um, I just um just doing my best to kind of reprioritize my activities and prioritize my life so that I can feel like I'm having success in the day by the end of the day. You know, having I think you're doing great. Life. I think you're doing great. Keep on keeping on what you're doing. I think you're doing fantastic. Thank you. Very, very good. Excellent. Okay, so just a few more observations as we sort of rescan here. As I observe what is true, I experience lightness and laughter. That's wonderful. That, that actually seems very Cali like having spoken to her. Stomach, lavender. Lavender just seems like a key herb. Like it's amazing that lavender came up at the top of everything that we scanned. But not only that, when we placed it in progressive insights, it then came up at the top of progressive insights like that's really a lot so suffering means we're ready to release suffering releasing need for extra protection adrenals cat's claw mimulus is about releasing fear there's the elm again a lot of flower essences are really resonating for her that's really interesting all right let's go ahead and she did say cataracts let's say if we can see anything for cataracts here uh, let's go back here so now let's go ahead we'll go to some of the custom libraries and look at these that are coming up at the top for her so we can look at those let's also just for a moment let's look at cataracts 
so cataract disturbance, radiation exposure, vitamin A deficiency, loss of estrogen causative, that's interesting, lymphatic blockage. Um, let's go ahead and grab those. And then let's go over here, false belief of barrier for protection, not able to see the future with joy, a genetic cause, vitamin E deficiency, calcium, a deposit cause. Now, when you do get a lot of these and you're like, gosh, that's like a lot, I mean, you could export these alone in the capsule, or you could do a playlist that is just for this issue. So we could clear all of these. And then what we could do is we could do like a cataract playlist. So we could just include the reds and the blues. And then it's a little bit more manageable, like you're able to, to take this in a little bit more. And I always like to see out of this what comes up the highest in progressive insight. So without adding anything else, let's see out of these things, what's the highest in progressive insights. So the highest <coughs> is liver toxicity. That's really interesting. Forgiveness of others, radiation exposure, occipital lobe, and vitamin E deficiency. Guys, I'm going to have to grab this cough thing. I'm going to have to grab a little bit of water. I'll come right back. So let's go ahead and I'm actually going to, I'm going to go here as I need to, I'm sorry, it's going to sound like I'm away from the microphone for a second. They need to grab that. I'm going to ask you, just do an observation. Is there anything that you see here in the custom libraries that looks interesting? And I will be back in a second here. Okay, so any ideas of things that you see coming up? Okay, we don't have any ideas. All right, I understand. Let me put this microphone back on here, and we'll just call out a few that might be. So kidney functional assessment, that could be interesting. Spider bite effects, weight release affirmations, detoxing, heart stress, zymogen, healing hidden infections, that could be an interesting one, biofilms. Let's see what's here. So some biofilms, well, there's really not a lot there to work with, but let's at least take the serapeptase and see if it's significant. Emotional clearing oils for the lungs. So purification and lime and juvaflex come up. All right, so that's interesting. Let's see if there's anything down at the bottom of this. I think there's a little scroll here, so we can go all the way down to the bottom. Progesterone, hurricane harmonization, cognitive wellness, um, biological dentistry. So there's a lot that we just sort of have to ignore. We don't want to take in everything that's red and blue, but we do want to look for things that are significant. I don't see anything that really I'm going to really take away at this moment. I think I'm going to more use my search function to look for things. So we already did the cataracts. We could also do vision assessment. So vision assessment one, glaucoma, presbyopia, so it's farsightedness. So she may not have glaucoma, but there could be an energy, an energy of that that, the, that we want to clear. So we never take these as a diagnosis, but just an indication that some energetic is present around this particular issue. So we've got some other things here, blood circulation, liver stagnation. Yeah, I think doing some castor oil packs and doing a liver cleanse, a juice cleanse, all of those things would be really helpful. Um, so many things can be solved with nature cure. All right, so we've got some vision solutions here. All right. And well, let's go ahead and some, one, some other thing that I wanted to look at, which was the affirmations. So let's see if we can find some good affirmations for her. My pancreas, okay, every cell in my body is healthy and well. Let's pick that one. All the cells of my body communicate and cooperate well. 
And another little strategy that you could do here is, um, oh, we had an affirmation in here, is go ahead and just put them up here and ex you could also export these to a playlist. So when you do a session with someone, it's really up to you how many playlists you wanna create for them for that session. Because you could say, you know, this is the playlist for this issue, this is the playlist for this issue, and just tell them, you know, do one, you know, do one on Monday, do the second one on Tuesday, do the third one on Wednesday, that type of thing. It's completely up to you. All the cells of my body communicate and cooperate well together. It's interesting about bisphenol A coming up, my microbiome. My liver makes bile in the perfect consistency with all the apps needed to emulsify fat. So um, things like that. I think for her, probably more like a breakthrough rem um, breakthrough affirmations. So I think I'd probably go back here and I'd wanna see breakthrough to success, these probably better ones for her at this moment. So let's go ahead and clear these. And let's look at these. I break through stuck patterns and emerge victoriously immediately at this moment. I accept success on every level. I am now thinking with super intelligence. So those would be three affirmations that would be awesome that Callie could just focus on, right? I am now thinking with super intelligence. I now accept success on every level. I break through stuck patterns and emerge victoriously immediately in this moment. You could just send it to send it to the capsule. All right. Is there a way to delete libraries from the Genius program and or from a specific client? Well, let's review how that's set up. So when you are testing libraries, you see them like this. When you are looking at your total library collection, you should do it from the navigation bar, which is up here at the top right. And then go to libraries and then you can look at your total collection of libraries. So when you look at the total collection um, of libraries, then we're going through this and we're thinking like, okay. You don't want to now i've created the libraries you're looking at. So I could drag this to the left and hit delete and delete the library. I'm not going to do that, but anybody, I think I can't show it on this version. I haven't quite figured that out yet. But yeah, you should be able to just pull this to the left and delete it. And when you're in this, you should be able to pull these to the left. You just swipe them to the left and you can delete them. Now there's a whole other piece with how it's assigned to a particular client. Because this is not that easy to work with on in an individual clients to assign them particular libraries, it gets it, the system is not really set up for that, in my opinion. So what I've always done is I go down to the bottom left, add to client, and then I add all my libraries to all of my clients. And the reason for that is then I can just use the search function. When I'm in custom libraries, I can just use this search function. I don't know why it just did a retest on those. Um, that doesn't make any sense because I didn't add any libraries. It shouldn't go into a rescan when you do that. Okay, but um, the reason that I do this is because it's just too, you know, can you imagine like assigning five libraries to a client and then you're just like, oh no, I don't want those libraries or I want to add, we don't have to answer your question, we don't really have a way to delete them um, from a client's matrix and then reassign other ones. The only way I could think of doing that is, I guess if you, let's see, if we go back here and we go libraries, add to client, what if we only did this one for her profile? Okay, it says they've been assigned. What well, does it delete the other ones? So now did it delete them? No, it just added them. So see the delete and add function per client is it's almost not really practical. So the best thing to do is just add all of your clients to all of your add all of your libraries to all of your clients and then use this search function to search within the libraries for what you're looking for. All right. Let's see if there's any other questions. All right. 
Okay, eye problems are about not wanting to see the future. There's definitely, you know, there's like these loose associations for sure with these different issues. And this definitely, you know, with that sort of thought, you can always say, you know, to your client, you know, that's a really interesting thing about, you know, is there anything that you're not wanting, you think you're maybe is hard to see or hard to look at, you can kind of bring that out. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a definitely a good thought. Anything else? Any other questions? Um, eyes can be fierce too. Eyes can be a lot of things and certainly the eyes are associated with the liver. So as you cleanse your liver, you can actually improve some eyesight. There's been, you know, definitely with your eyes to keep, to keep your eyes, avoid looking at LED lights when possible. Don't, if you possible, don't add LED lights to your home because they're very tough on the eyes. Spending time outdoors and doing looking at distance is very, very important and increasingly important in the world that we live in. Doing this intense, you know, especially with the phone up to your face kind of a thing and reading everything on small screens, we're probably stressing our eyes a lot. And we're probably going to, we, we are seeing in younger and younger people increased incidences of myopia you know, nearsightedness at a much younger age. And, you know, if that continues to get worse and worse, like worse and worse um, prescriptions, that can have real implications for the eyes um, that are quite serious. So ways to really keep your vision is, you know, getting away from screens, relaxing your eyes, going outside and make sure you're looking at the farthest point into the horizon. And of course, there are lots of different eye exercises that you can do. You can even get those pinhole glasses, and that can actually help to correct some of the myopia. So there's lots of different things that you can do. I have an LED light that helps with vision. How is it different? Um, I don't know what your LED light wand is, so I couldn't tell you. Um, what I'm talking about is that your lights that are in your house that have a really blue a light, a, a strong blue light element to them. And they're used to like light up your kitchen. And so you go into bed at night and your kitchen light is LED. That's not helping your eyes. It's detrimental to the eyes. And it's also not helping your melatonin at all. So there are even, um, I would look online for these amber lights that are excellent. You just unscrew your light bulb um, by your bed or in your bathroom or in, you know, some part of your home. And these nice amber lights are all free of any of that blue range. And that really helps you to get a better sleep. Um, and it's just the LED. They're really unfortunate that they've been so popularized. They're really not n natural or they're, they're, I think of them as sort of like synthetic light you know, that they're, they're really, you know, sort of, I would say very much opposed to what we would consider to be something healthy and nourishing for our eyes, which would be, you know, sunlight during the day, but just being outdoors and looking far and looking near. When you think of us evolutionarily and being nomadic and just being outdoors so much, we're constantly looking at different distances and looking, you know, away and and also moving a lot more. So the neck muscles and all of these things come together and they affect our eyes as does our liver health. So there's no doubt that a congested liver is also going to affect our eye health. All right, so I have an LED 660 for my eye. It's supposed to be useful using it three minutes per day. All right, Nancy, send me your your exact product information by email to me. I think you know my email and I will look at it. I may even write about it in my Substack. And for those of you who haven't subscribed yet, please uh, do so. And I'll just put the link here, Errol Policano, um, dot substack dot com. Okay. And I will look into those LED lights, the LED light that you're using for vision, and I'll look back at the information I have talking about how LED light can really be detrimental to the eye. And we'll see, maybe there's um, some, some truth to this therapeutic that you have and we can address that and why. 
and then I'll also look at the general LED light so we'll figure out what's going on there. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for today. I really appreciate you being part of our genius community and I will see you next week. Have a wonderful week everyone. Take care. Be well. Bye bye for now.